In this video, I'm going to solve this question. The article Monte Carlo simulation tool for better understanding of LRFD suggests that yield strength for A36 grade steel is normally distributed with mean equal to 43 and standard deviation equal to 4.5. In part A, we have to find the probability that yield strength is at most 40 and then we have to find the probability that it is greater than 60. So first of all, let's define a random variable. Let's say that x is a random variable that denotes the yield strength for A36 grade steel. So this is how we are defining x. We are given that x is normally distributed with mean equal to 43 and standard deviation equal to 4.5. So we can write this information here. So x is normally distributed with mean 43 and standard deviation 4.5. We have to find the probability that x is at most 40. So that means we have to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 40. And as x is a normal random variable, we can convert it into standard normal. So we can write that this probability is equal to probability of x minus mu divided by sigma less than equal to 40 minus mu divided by sigma. We are given the values of mu and sigma in the question and we know that this is z. So we can write that this is equal to probability that z is less than or equal to 40 minus 43 divided by 4.5. And this is equal to probability that z is less than or equal to minus 0.67. Well, you can find this probability from a standard normal table. So the probability that z is less than or equal to minus 0 0.67 is 0 0.2514. So therefore, we can say the probability that the yield strength is at most 40 is 0 0.2514. Now let's move to the next part of this question. So now we have to find the probability that x is greater than 60. So now we have to find this probability. Well, once again, let's convert this into a standard normal. So we can write it like this. Greater than 60 minus mu divided by sigma. This is equal to the probability that z is greater than 60 minus 43 divided by 4.5. This is equal to probability that z is greater than 3.78. Well, using the complement rule, we can write that this is equal to 1 minus probability that z is less than or equal to 3.78. You can find this probability from the standard normal table. So this will be equal to 1 minus 1 as this probability will be approximately equal to 1. So this is equal to 0. So the probability that yield strength is greater than 60 is close to 0. So this is all about part A, let's move to part B. In part B, we have to find that value of yield strength that separates the strongest 75% from the others. Let's say this is how the random variable x is distributed. So this is a normal distribution. And let's say that this value is x1. And the probability that x will lie to the right of x1 is 0.75 and the probability that x will lie in this region is 0.25. So let's say this is how we are defining x1. So basically in part b we have to calculate the value of x1 because the value of x1 separates the strongest 75 from the others. So that means we have to find the value of x1 such that the probability that x is less than or equal to x1 is equal to 0 0.25. This value of x1 is separating the strongest 75% from the others. So now let's see how can we find this value of x1. Well, because x is a random variable that is normally distributed. So to find the value of x1, let's first convert it into standard normal. So we can write that this probability is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma less than or equal to x1 minus mu divided by sigma and this is equal to 0 0.25. So this is how we have transformed it and we know that 
this is z so this implies the probability that z is less than equal to x1 minus 43 divided by 4.5 is equal to 0 0.25 now let's have a look at the standard normal table to find that value of x such that the area to the left of it is 0 0.25 as you can see, this is a standard normal table and from this table, we have to find that value of z such that the area to the left of it is 0 0.25. So it is here. So when z is equal to minus 0 0.67, the cumulative probability value is 0 0.2514. Well, this is not exactly 0 0.25, but this is the closest to 0 0.25 that we have in this table. So let's proceed with this value only. So now from the table, we know that this value is minus 0 0.67. So we can write x1 minus 43 divided by 4.5 is equal to minus 0 0.67. This implies x1 is equal to 4.5 multiplied by minus 0 0.67 plus 43. And this is equal to 39.985. Well, remember that this minus 0 0.67 that I have got from the standard normal table is an approximate z value because we didn't find the exact z value. You can find the exact z value corresponding to 0 0.25 if you want to and you can use the interpolation method for that. So if you use the interpolation method to find the exact z value, then your z value will differ a bit and consequently your answer might also differ, but there will not be much difference. So with this, we are done with part B as well. And this is all for this question.